What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Rent This Flip That, and we are back out at the duplexes in Gallatin, Tennessee. That's right, we are at the Tabby House, and the last time you guys were with us, we had some major subfloor issues. We had to tear out all the tile, and I even had to remove the door and the casing. All the flooring around the casing at the floor was rotten, so therefore it had to be tore out and it had to be replaced. I have a new door for that, but that comes later. Now as you can see from the plywood, it was really hard to get a number off the back of the house and pull four foot. So in that video, I went over where you would want to pull your measurements from to get that. Now once we got our lawn snapped and we were ready to go, I got a sawzall and cut all the plywood out from that area and around the doorway so that I could get it replaced. I exposed all the floor joists and explained to you what was going to happen once we got all the plywood tore up and needed to do some blocking to support our new subfloor. So in this video, we're going to pick up right where we left off. I'm going to get this back band blocked up, I'm going to use a triple band, and then I'm going to show you how I attached my supporting joist over on the side and towards the back to make sure I have something for my plywood to land on. Alright guys, let's jump right back in. So I brought Kelly in to take a look at this. Uh, this screw right here, this pipe goes like this and comes over here like that. And this screw is in it. See, I, you can see me wiggling the pipe. Mm -hmm. So is the screw plugging the hole and that's why it's not leaking? Or I'm not it? sure. Okay. That's why I haven't it pulled like it. looks like there's water down there. Or it got wet. That'd be a screw in the pipe, and it is plugging the hole. <laughs> Don't pull it out. All right, so there we go. That's that. So we'll probably have to take care of that. A little flex seal. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's going to require some things. Uh, like, a, first of all, a plumber. <laughs> Did they make it go up like that because this is here? Maybe. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. This pipe doesn't go up, it goes down. Right, right. It goes down here and then it goes up over that little stud right there. And then down over here. And I, I imagine we probably could just come over here like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not do that. Unless that's required for some kind of P trap or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not a plumber. So, hey guys, this is a good time to jump in and let us know what is going on here. What needs to happen? And how do you remedy this situation? Because uh, clearly I'm gonna have to take this drywall out and. Well guys, it was time to quit messing around with that plumbing and get back to what we know how to do, floors and framing. Now, as I stated in the other video, the biggest problem I was having was that the band for the deck was attached to the band of the house. However, the band to the house was rotten and there was bolts running through it. So there was no way I was going to be able to replace the complete band. So I had to double it up in the front so that I had something sitting solid underneath both sides of my wall so that the weight could transfer down to the block. As far as that outside band goes, I had a repair for that too. So you guys are gonna have to stick around to see that. Because I wanna run a band on the inside of it, and because these joists will be in the way, I decided to cut them back an inch and a half and put this band in in two pieces. And then I will pressure block it. Then once I do the repair out front, it'll almost be as if I have a triple beam back here. I feel that to be sufficient enough to hold up both sides of this door. Besides, all of it is sitting on solid block. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back. It is the, I think it's the third day we were here. So I wanted to check you through here and show you the progress, what we got, what I did. Took a lot of thinking. And... Okay guys, before I covered this up over here, I wanted to show you what actually went on. So as you can see over here, I got this band and I had to do it in three pieces. There was really no way. I got it solid all the way across over there. And then I got it all the way over to this, this block right here. And so what I wanted to do was make sure I had three full inches underneath there and then some sticking out. So as you can see over there, I'll be able to lay my plywood on there real nice. So I did some pressure blocking in between these joists right here. They're not going to roll. They're not going to flip. They're actually screwed to that. I was able to bring that band in over there like that. And then over here, I did the same thing. See, this has been collapsed on these corners. 
So what I did was I cut some seven and a quarter inch blocks and I had to beat them. As you can see, the, pl the plastic is a little disintegrated right there. But that's okay, these are pressure treated blocks. And I mean, they're gonna hold up just as, these are not pressure treated as you can see. So we, at least we didn't rip into that. So I'm going to put some more pressure blocks over there, over here, and then cap this off with something. And then I'm going to get to work over on that. But I wanted to show you that those blocks were in there underneath the wall. And I actually stacked that one underneath the stud. Couldn't do it over here because oh, we had a wire in the way. And so, and even if I was to put something in there now, I'd kind of close that up if anything and everything needed to be worked on over there. So I decided not to do that. All right. So the plan is to get over here and try to get some blocks like this over here sticking out. But sticking out so far that when I can cap it and push this plumbing back into the wall and then just cap it with something that I have over here. All right, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, that's the plan. Back to work. Here we go. All right, guys, so update on what's going on over here. Let me show you what I did. Now, I already showed you all the blocking that went along across there. But right here, I went ahead and I got double blocking over there. So there's something for the plywood to sit on over there. And then right here, you can see there is that blocking that's that right there was a little bit rotten but that's solid over here and this was pretty solid here except for just right at that corner so and then i put this block here it's seven and a quarter so i was able to jack it back up and lift it tie it back into this joist back here and over here i did the same thing i put this in here seven and a quarter i had to really pry it up and i couldn't get it all the way up but i mean i got that up way higher than it did i may just have to put a little shim there or something or just let it float over but anyway uh then right here i put a five and a half inch block and i'm going to Put another five and a half inch block here and i'm gonna put a five and a half inch block over there and then i'm gonna put a board across here that way i can shove this thing into the wall where it's supposed to be and then screw into right here and then screw into my other piece right there give me something to put my floor across all the way and it'll be supported by this joist right here and that wall over there so i feel real good about that so that's the plan when we get done we'll have to do the same thing over here this thing should be solid blocked all the way across by the time we get done so all right that's where we are i'll at you in a minute guys so here we are I got this blocking all wrapped up I got blocking all underneath there holding that wall up and I try to stack it under the studs just because mainly the plate is gone so that I feel a little bit better about and then also if you can see where my block actually fell through over there so I'm gonna have to go get it down in the basement and just screw it to the back side up there that way I have right against that plate right there uh, it will be uh, you know pretty close for the plywood there we go, you can see it's solid blocked all the way across. It's triple blocked up here at the front door. Hold on, back it up. It's triple blocked over here at the front door underneath both the jack and the king. And it's, well, you can see it's majorly blocked. I don't need to do anything else over here. This thing is going nowhere and I feel a lot better about it. So it's now it's time to go put that block in over there and cut the plywood and put it in. Let's go. All right guys, so I am about to go in here and put the plywood down. So I wanted to show you how we're gonna be cutting this. Let's take a look over here. From over there, I thought I was gonna be able to go four foot and then eight foot across here, but that doesn't land on four foot, it's a little bit less. And I wanna get the most out of this plywood as I can with it being attached to and going underneath that wall. So what I've decided to do is come out to this joist right here, which is 58 inches. And that is with me being able to push it a little bit underneath the wall over there. It's like actually 57 and three quarters, but if I go 58, I can probably snug that underneath where I've chiseled some of that plywood out over there and uh, make a good, nice tight fit and then slide it up underneath the wall. Now, as you can see over here, the plywood is still mostly here over here on this side, but Kelly chipped it back just a little bit. So I like two inches, but it was good and solid. So I'll be able to come back and like I say, like I do, just like when I do my flooring, slip it in this way and slip it that way and then come together on a seam right here and screw it down. And then I'll be able to go the full eight foot that way. And then we'll start back over here with either a four footer, two footer, or a full sheet somewhere where it just doesn't break on the same break. All right, that's the plan of attack. I'll check back with you. Here we go. 
All right, guys, so we are back. It's the next day, and Kelly sprayed off her mold preventative stuff on the joist right there. Let's take a look. We're about to glue this plywood down. So I wanted to show you where we are. We got everything blocked up. I got that double blocking over there. We're blocked up all the way around there, and I feel way better about this. Yeah, now I don't feel too good about what's going on right there, but I mean, I'm thinking I'm gonna be able to fix that after the fact. And I'll show you that repair too, because I do want to block that up real strong before I put any kind of drywall on there. And I was able to get the uh, hot and cold back into the into the wall. So it was out, out here. I mean, yeah, it was a little suspect over here, but hey, it's blocked up, and I got at least two and a half inches of blocking across there. It's better than nothing, right? Okay. And of course, I didn't put solid blocking across there because I didn't want to block up the electrical in case somebody had to come back and work on it. But you can see I put a solid block out there, and then I put a block right there, just kind of for a pressure block. And then we're blocked all the way across here. Now I did something different yesterday. I came back here and as I started messing with this, this thing was just so rotted out. And I know we said we we're gonna replace that whole band once we're able to get this deck right here tore out and be able to access it. But right now, that's what's going on there. Definitely suspect there. But I wanted to tear that rod out and put some kind of solid blocking on that for me to screw my plywood down in. And so that's what we did right there. I am gonna have to fur this wall in, so that's gonna be even more sitting on solid. What was important was that I got solid blocking right here and solid block in here, solid block in here, and solid block in here. So in right there too, so you can see. All right guys, so it's time to get in here and get to work. I'm gonna set the camera up. You guys can just follow along. Here we go. All right guys, so the wireless died. So I, I plugged in this, uh, shotgun mic hopefully you can hear me so we're back to tearing out plywood and, and beefing this thing up as you can see the wall that sits right there is the uh, exterior band it's in great shape no rot over there thank goodness however since the wall is it looks like a two by six wall and if not then it's just it's a really thick been padded out but i can't imagine it not being a two by six wall because it is sitting on the band all the way out there and it is out here so what i'm going to do is go ahead and block this up so that I got a lot of support underneath there. And then I'm gonna run the band, that way I can screw to it over here. That's the plan going forward, and I'll have my uh, band sitting right there, and then I'll have it headed off over here on this other side over here. That's what we're gonna do now. I got a bunch of blocks cut, and I cut them at two and three quarters. That way, when I go to screw the band on, you can see it sticks out of the floor pretty good, and that's gonna be awesome for putting my plywood on. Also, you can see I beveled these right here so they're easier to roll in there, but I got the full seven and a quarter and I actually went seven and five sixteen. So if they squash down, I'll be in good shape once I go to screw them in over here. All right, that's what we're up to next. I'll check back in with you. Feel for nails over there. Well guys, it looks like we are out of time for this episode. I just wanted to make sure I got you through some of the hardest parts, which was just doing the blocking. You guys see me do this over on the other side, and you know what it is. I'm just gonna pound this band up here, and I have my blocks to screw to, and then I'm gonna throw this plywood on. That way, you're not stuck on this whole subfloor issue through this whole tabby renovation. Besides, we've got a lot of other projects to do. Drywall needs to be done, the windows need to be trimmed out, the door needs to be installed, the cabinets have to be ripped out and replaced. <sighs> Man, we got a lot coming up. So if you guys don't wanna miss that, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. That way YouTube will let you know when we put those videos out. 
All right, guys, I'm going to get this band in and get this subfloor in, and I hope to see you guys on the next one.